What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video that I don't really have that much to do with. Don't worry, gonna explain. So a couple of weeks ago, Bell, like the legit company Bell, reached out and was like, hey Chase, do you want to come out to this press launch event? It's gonna be like the biggest one we're gonna do in 2018. And I was moving, of course. A lot of you guys probably know like these magazine dudes get invited to these press launch events all the time. YouTubers don't. So I'm like, I'm moving. I can't take advantage of it. So I came up with a way so that I could go to the press launch event and move at the same time. The key, I got my buddy Luke to go. <laughs> so uh, you guys have seen Luke on a lot of videos recently and don't worry, we are working on a video to explain who Luke is and why Luke is drinking a Kill Cliff. This video is not sponsored by Kill Cliff, but Kill Cliff, I know you're based in Atlanta and if you would like to sponsor a video, what up? Anyway, we're working on a video to explain to you guys who Luke is, why he has been in videos recently, but my idea was like, Luke, this is what I said to him. I was like, go out to California, go forth and record some content and then come back and tell me about how it was so that we could have the, what's the word? We could have the civilian experience of going to a press launch event. Mm -hmm. So first off, did you have a good time? Oh yeah, it was awesome. Okay. Well, since you had a good time and the screen just... Since Luke had a good time, I'm going to let you go ahead and tell us about this helmet and visor and experience thing while showing you guys footage of the event. Welcome to the civilian view of a press launch event by Bell Helmets. Luke, take it away. Was that my cue? Did I miss that? No, no. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not no, so, uh, yeah. Recently, I had the opportunity to attend a Bell Helmets product launch event. I was flown out to Newport Beach in California on a Tuesday. The event didn't start until the next day, so I got checked into my hotel room dropped off my bags and set off for the Pacific Ocean. I'd never been to the left coast, so going to the beach and checking out the surfing scene was at the top of my list. I grabbed some footage and hung out for about two hours before the temperature dropping and the wind picking up forced me back to my warm hotel room. The next day I took an Uber to a local restaurant where the presentation was being held up. There were about 20 motorcycles lined up in the parking lot. Once I got checked in, I grabbed some breakfast and set up the camera to get some footage. There were about 15 people from various media sources covering the event as well. Three of the guys were Bell sponsored riders and had custom painted helmets. One was a stunt rider with a Red Bull helmet, and the other two, who were owners of a local customization shop, had their company logo, Suicide Machine Company, painted on it, which was really cool. After everyone had finished breakfast, they started the presentation. I'll give you the main points of the presentation along with my experience in the last three months of using it. First off, the Bell SRT modular helmet is a fiberglass composite shell with a weight of 3.89 pounds, which isn't the lightest helmet out there. This is the modular though, and the added benefit of a liftable chin bar tacks on some weight. The helmet disguises this weight well by being very balanced. The weight isn't noticed unless the chin bar is in the up position. Even then, it hasn't caused any neck fatigue in the three months of daily riding that I've used it for. Features include a drop-down internal tinted visor, recessed EPS speaker pockets, and Bell's Panavision face shield with Class 1 optics. Basically, the Panavision provides a greater field of view and makes it easier to see periphery objects when doing head checks. Class 1 optics mean that it's optically correct and distortion free, leading to an accurate sense of depth perception and visual clarity. Coming with a modest price of $349.95, it is an absolute bargain for the number of features and versatility this helmet provides. The helmets we received a test had Bell's newest shield, the ProTint Panavision Photochromic Shield, which is a clear shield that is activated by UV light and adjusts the tinting based on light received. In Bell's words, it provides enhanced contrast, helping to discern shapes and colors more quickly. The result is enhanced clarity and a reduction of eye strain through varying light conditions. Carrying a price of $199.95, in my opinion, is a great investment and adds to the versatility and usefulness of this helmet. After the presentation, I received the keys for the motorcycle I would be riding, a Triumph Bobber 1200, which was kind of a throwback for me. I haven't ridden a cruiser-style motorcycle since my very first bike, which was the Sportster 1200. 
It was a very different but familiar feeling as I adjusted the forward controls and lowered ground clearance, which is a stark contrast to the sportier Ducati Monster I've grown accustomed to daily riding over the past three years. We set out on surface streets, which gave me plenty of opportunities to test the helmet in all its configurations. With the chin bar in the up position and utilizing the internal sun visor, I was getting full airflow and kept cool as we went from light to light. Once on the highway and with the chin bar down, the three massive intake vents on the front and the two exhaust vents in the rear moved a ton of air without creating a ton of noise. The pro tint visor made everything easier to see and adjusted its tinting precisely to the lighting conditions. After jumping off the highway, the switchback and twisty roads were less than a mile away. My relaxed cruising was abruptly halted and confronted by a gauntlet of never-ending peck scraping and apex hunting. After a couple of unexpected decreasing radius corners, I let everyone pass me and rode at a more appropriate pace suited for the motorcycle I was on. After about 10 miles of trial by fire, the group stopped at Glendora Mountain Lookout and the bell photographers grabbed some shots. Then we were back at it, dodging tar snakes, carving up the mountain to our lunch location about 20 minutes away. We had lunch and then headed out to our next photo location about 40 miles away. We pulled off the road, lined the bikes up, and had about 30 minutes of downtown to relax and socialize while the photographers set up their equipment. We then hopped on the bikes and one at a time, about 30 seconds apart, ran a section of road with a long sweeping arc. Photographers were basically sitting on the apex and got some amazing action shots. With each run, I increased my speed and moved my turn end point farther and farther into the corner. I found the limit of that bobber on my third run. I flicked the bike into the corner, but it wasn't pointed at the apex where I wanted it. Instead, I was aimed straight at a guardrail. Utilizing my reflexes of a cat and speed of a mongoose, I stood the bike up, grabbed a fistful of front brake, and then flicked the bike back over as hard as I could. It was an adrenaline dumping, oh crap moment that seemed like forever. When I reviewed the footage with Chase, I had to watch all the runs twice to even notice the incident. Watching the video, everything happens about half a second. It made me realize how fast our brains think when that adrenaline hits and how time really does seem to slow down. After the photo runs were completed, we left and one at a time got behind the minivan, which had all the photographers crammed in the back with the rear hatch open. They did an amazing job shooting the solo riding shots from all sorts of angles. Unfortunately, my GoPro battery died we then booked it about 30 miles to Big Bear and got checked into our hotel. Day two we left at 10 a.m. headed towards Newport Beach. The descent down the mountain provided some of the most beautiful views I've ever seen. We were above the cloud ceiling at that elevation. Instead of dirt, trees, and normal ground stuff, it was just white fluffy clouds as far as you could see. The road down the mountain had the longest sweeping corners I've ever ridden. We then jumped back on the highway and cruised for about an hour until we were about 15 miles outside of Newport Beach. Then we hit a wall of traffic, which we easily bypassed by hopping between the cars and lane splitting. Seriously, lane splitting is so smart and beneficial, it should absolutely be legal in every state. After breezing through traffic, we arrived at Brandamp, the media company coordinating the event, dropped the bikes off, grabbed an Uber, and caught my flight back to Georgia. I want to say a special thank you to Bell Helmets for sponsoring the event, also to Brandon, Zach, and Kevin from the Brandamp team for inviting us to attend, coordinating everything, and making it an awesome experience. So guys, that's uh, that's what it's like going to a press launch event thing. Hopefully we did a good job in this video and we'll get to do more of them. I'm not huge on traveling, so I'm probably gonna send Luke on a lot. So you're probably gonna get better at this whole situation. So guys, that's Luke. I'm Chase on to us. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and we will continue to give you the civilian perspective of brand things, I guess. Insider insight. <laughs> Insider insight with Luke and James. <laughs> new, that's the new show, Insider Insight. Moto Insider. We'll work on the title. You guys hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you like motorcycle stuff. They should come up with a title. Yeah, let us know in the comments what the title is of a show where I just send Luke to go do stuff and he brings us the insider insight. Your comment is not allowed to be insider in all the- I already trademarked it. I just trade- uh, Got it, yeah. Trademarked it. Trademarked it. Trade Copyright. I'm gonna stop. Bye.